So, now we can look into, we will be looking into plumbing services that is essentially water supply first and then we wastewater handling, right. So, we will look into some basic principles, diversity of usage we have already talked about. Now, uh, we have already, we have already looked into Bernoulli's equation and we also know about continuity equation, Kirchhoff's law and all we talked about. Now, uh, one can use, one can derive in fact, Poisson's equation for stream flow, which you might have done somewhere. For example, it is the viscosity, you know viscosity is the resistance offered by one layer of the fluid over another when it is flowing. So, if you take in a, let us say you take in a pipe, you take in a pipe, you take in a pipe or you know the, the flow of a small layer here will be opposed by next layer, it will be opposing it, right. And therefore, since it opposes, it generates a kind of a shear stress. So, the shear stress is proportional to velocity gradient. More the velocity difference, you know, over its distance, then resistance will be more. So, that is what is viscosity. We know that is what is viscosity. So, from <coughs> fundamental principles for stream flow, you can actually derive fossil equation which relates flow to, which relates flow to uh, area or diameter or such things related length and etcetera, etcetera. However, uh, actual flow is not stream flow all the time, right? A lot of assumptions we make. So, usually in water supply system, we use Hazen's Williams equation or Manning's equation or similar equations actually. So, generally people use Hazen's Williams equation for water supply system and that is somewhat, somewhat, you know, it is semi empirical. I mean, semi empirical because many of those fluid mechanics things are derived also from dimensional analysis, but they are semi empirical. For example, this powers. So, this is uh, in this one. V is the flow, V is the flow meter cube per second and R is what is called hydraulic radius. Weighted perimeter divided by, I mean area divided by weighted perimeter, area divided by weighted perimeter. So, in case of a pipe running full under pressure, area is pi d square by and what is the perimeter, weighted perimeter, the whole pi d is a, is a weighted perimeter. So, simply this is d by 4, d by 4 for pipe running full. So, this is hydraulic radius to the power 0.63 and slope of the head line. So, there will be when pipe there is a flow, the head difference head difference and this is the length. So, this is H f divided by L H f. So, head difference between two points in pipe. That's so, slope of the head line is this, head line is this, two you know distance between this, but the pressure head would vary. This is not the you know pressure head because it would vary depending upon uh, you can have gravity, right pressure you know gravity. There are three components of the pressure head. So, pressure head, pressure head would vary. So, H f is a slope of total head line, right. And A is the cross section, C is something called roughness coefficients, C is something called roughness coefficients. So, that is Hagen's Williams equation, that is what we use in water supply system by and large national building code or SP 32. SP 32, you will find this, which is available in the, in the net also. So, SP 32 is a uh, one special publication of Bureau of Indian Standard that gives you. So, they all uses this charts etcetera based on this. <coughs> so, if this is the case, if I want to convert, um, sorry this was velocity, I, I made a mistake, this was velocity, 
not flow velocity as a function of hydraulic radius etcetera etcetera perimeter you know like equated perimeter and those and then flow is equals to I must multiply by area right. So, V is equals to okay, and th the units are very 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 much important units are very much important. So, uh, this was in you know this yeah, you have to convert into appropriate unit. So, that is why if D is in millimeter you want to convert it into meter right 10 to the power 3.63 again comes in and this is also because d to the power d to the power you know this if I look at this r is a by p which is d by 4. So, d to the power 0.63 will also come into picture. So, d to the power 0.63 will also come into picture and conversion of you know 10 to the power 3 to the power 0 0.6 will, will come into picture. So, all these are all this actually uh, taking all this and multiplying by the area you get f an expression for just converting the right units 3.1 10 to the power minus 4 C D to the power 2.63 kiloliters per day. This is in terms of kiloliters per day. So, if it is in kiloliters per day, this is the constant is 3.1 into 10 to the power minus 4, right. So, uh, consider now pipes in series, then flow is constant, flow is constant, there are some basic equations actually, so as we said we will look into some basic equation, then look into the actual building and things like that. So, V 1 A 1 must be equals to V 2, right. Supposing there are two pipes, there is one pipe and there is another pipe and these pipes are in series, flow must be constant. If it is a steady flow, flows, you know, flow is constant. So, flow through first one and flow through the second one will be same and head will be sum total of the head difference between these two pipes in series. If pipes are in parallel, so flow would be sum total of flow through all of them. For example, if it is something like this right and something like this. So, flow flow would be you know like flow would be sum total of the flow through each one of them and they will be under both of them will be under constant head. So, it is like you know it is a, it's a it's, so in pipe parallel heads are same three pipes in parallel let us say I distribute them the enter and in the you know so head would be this should be small h head would be same flow would be different. So, this is the principle this is basic principle and we will look into the network principle a little bit later on. Now, typical water supply in a building low rise building will have this kind of component. What are these component? See so this the you might the scheme could be something like this in a low rise building a three story building you have the municipal mains you have municipal mains. So, from there there is for rules which will connect it and I might have two source of line. One is for storing them you know say overhead tank I can store them in overhead tank and I can have you know direct supply to each floor direct supply to each floor. So, if, if you see this diagram you will see there is some direct supply lines to each floor and there could be this is there is a there is a booster pump which takes it to the overhead tank where I have a storage. So, this is for 24 hourly use all the time use this is the running water which is used if it is intermittent supply if it is continuous supply you possibly do not need storage in any case, but then continuous supply may not be available. Normally these are this is connected to the uh, con you know the where you use almost every time like uh, bath and also maybe something in kitchen and this might be running water must be for drinking water purposes and so on so forth. So, this is the typical line now 
this is actually this is the municipal line after that is consumers line actually this will be all consumers point this is the consumers point from there you know so this is the this is the uh, main is the municipal line then there is a consumer point and there is a branching that's what occurs now if you'll see in relatively you know relatively taller buildings you might use what is called a hydrodynamic tank so essentially what is done here the water is actually pumped up using compressed air you know because i mean you can you can you basically the purpose of compressed air is much controlled so compressor would be there where you have compressed air here and water and from this the water is supplied to the overhead tank you might have some directly supplying from the tank to certain level if you go to another one it might supply you know so this is to the drinking water continue running drinking water this must be cold water supply all the time from a tank so this is uh, also you might have a direct supply going up direct supply going up which is you know which can be connected so during the this would be mainly meant for drinking water this is the storage water line is same so that's how it is okay uh, this is so this is water right so typical water supply system would look something like this and uh, also uh, fire fighting water right fire of course we have shown it earlier and requirements are given for each type of occupancy what should be the kind of uh, quantity of you know or size of the tank required for fire fighting and we, if you remember we talked of wet riser system combination and all that so this all get coupled together water supply system fire fighting as well as for regular use now generally i i would like to find out how much is a you know i'd like to find out what is a supply rate or quantity of supply i require so usually this is arrived at using something called a fixture unit what is fixture unit you have you see if you look at the uh, appliances that appliances that you use or your uh, you know like for example a tap a shower they are they do not you know everywhere you don't require the same flow tap would require much less flow compared to a shower so flows from different discharge units discharge outlets they are different that's number one second issue is their frequency of use is also different a kitchen tap might be used more often than a shower right so therefore this is so therefore what is there's one way is to make it make it all uniform in some manner so we we actually devised i mean a, a new unit is devised which is called fixture unit new new terminology fixture unit is used now this fixture unit actually is a quantity in terms of which the load production effects of the plumbing system of different kinds of pump plumbing fixtures is expressed on a some arbitrary scale or which is same for example you might say the least one a tap wash basin tap it might be one fixture unit shower might be two fixture unit or something like that so you bring in totally your load is expressed in terms of fixture unit so it is the load producing capacity of different fixture units which are there so that's expressed in a some kind of a uniform unit throughout this is given in table 31 of sp32 for different types of fixtures right so different types of fixtures supposing now you know in a given floor right how many kitchen taps are there how many you know bath showers are there total number of fixtures being known corresponding fixture unit of each one is known to you you can sum up the fixture unit and that will give you the total number of fixture unit now each fixture units its flow corresponding to unit fixture unit that has been estimated 
because this is engineering practice people from experience have produced that. So what is done is you have that many number of fixture units but you do not take all the fixture units into your design because of diversity. So you take something called effective fixture unit to be taken in the design and these values are also given another table in national building code or SP 35. 30, 32 not 32 it is 35. 32 is uh, functional planning of uh, building industrial 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 structure. Sorry, this is SP 35. So in SP 35 it is given in SP 35. So you can table 31 of SP 35 we can get it and this effective number of fixture units are also given right. So these are based on engineering experience people have experience so based on that they have actually produced this kind of table. So if you know that once you know the number of fixture units once you know the total number of fixture units and effective fixture units flow per fixture unit you know is Q then Q multiplied by you know flow per fixture unit is given Q which I will just tell you in a minute in a minute I will just tell you. Uh, so then you can find out the total flow because multiplied by the effective number of fixture unit by Q in fact they give you another chart or table also is available. Then find out the actual pipe length for every floor because you want to find out the if you want to use the Hazen's Williams equation you got to know the length right HF by L is required. So you find out the actual length right actual pipe length, pipe length for every floor separately and head available. Available head would be supposing it is coming from the tank then you know how much is the head available or if it is from a pump at the bottom so the head that the pump is supplying or pump, pump at the bottom is known minus whatever height it has gone. So you can find out the available head right. So use then either chart the chart available in the code or use this formula formula that I have given you to find out what is everything. So this is known this is for cast iron for example is 100 is given these values are again tabulated the roughness coefficient for the type of pipe that you are using how much is the value of C, G I pipes what should be the value that is given in the table. S you have found out because you have found out the length and you have found out the head available D is the only unknown so you can find out the D right. Now for, for a floor find the fitting and maximum length which will give you the least value of S because the D would be you know D would be maximum for least value of S. Now you do not design different pipes, pipe size should be same otherwise it would be too costly because additional things will come there will be losses at the joints. So use uniform pipe sizes so as much as possible. So what you do is you take the least S value and that would correspond to maximum D value. So find out the D corresponding to least, least L right. So find out maximum L and least value of S therefore S H F by L. So similarly find for each floor you can find out the pipe sizes similarly for each floor you can find out the pipe sizes all right each floor you can find out the pipe sizes all right. So that is what it is that is the principle we will solve a problem or two to uh, look into this right. Okay. Just as an example let us say first look at the first one simple uh, this uh, you know if I have pipes are in series I said is Q1 Q2 is equals to Q3 pipes are in parallel Q1 Q2 Q3 is equals to you know is sum total is this and H is H1 plus H2 plus H3. So consider this case pipe length 20 mm pipe length 20 meter diode 50 mm followed by a 32 mm 32 millimeter dia and 40 mm length and 25 millimeter dia 30 mm 30 meter length head at either end is 20 and 5 meter that means you have got 15 meter head right 15 meter head and there are three pipes something of this kind larger pipe then there is a smaller pipe and still there is a smaller pipe right and lengths are different lengths are different right. So this is a situation one of them is 20 other is 32 other is uh, uh, 
20 meters sorry 50 first one is 50 next one is 32 next one is 25 mm dia and lengths are different so you want to find out basically so h1 h2 and h3 you got to find it out you want to find out h1 h2 and h3 uh, right and total q through them so this h1 plus h h1 plus h2 plus h3 is equals to 20 minus 5 that is equals to 15 that is that's that right okay so if you want to find out if you want to find that out if you want to find it out uh, first of all q1 is equals to q1 will be equals to you know uh, if it is same same uh, not, uh, you know same kiloliters but the same unit we are using then 3.1 into 10 to the power minus 4 c is there and d is known to us so q1 d is how much let us say 50 mm right 50 d to the power point d to the power point 63 divided by uh, you know uh, sorry th this d and then h1 h1 by l l is known to us how much is l 20 meter this to the power point 5 4 in the second case this would be this value will change and this value this is unknown and this must be equals to 3.1 into 10 to the power 4 minus 4 c etc etc what you will you will have you know so if you put equate this obviously everything will cancel out leaving the d and d to the power 0.63 and h1 to the power 0.54 divided by 20 to the power 0.54 rest all will cancel out so you will get I will get one equation you know this is this must be equals to d1 d is known to me h1 is unknown so this is also known so these values must this must be equals to d2 by length so I will get actually I will get how many equations I will get three equations two independent equation actually because you know like q1 q3 yeah so two equations I get third equation will be h1 plus h2 plus 15. So, three unknowns I can solve and find out three unknowns I can solve and find out the three unknowns for three unknowns, but it is not going to be solved just easily because to the power 0 0.53 etcetera etcetera is there. So, it can it is a transcendental equation trial and error and you can solve for this to find out or you know like for example, find out h 1 in terms of h 2 find out h uh, 3 in terms of h 1. So, you have now one variable and put them h 1 plus h 2 plus h 3 equals to 15, but that would be all will be related to you know the, to the power there are some powers should be there. So, from that using transcendental equation you can actually can use by any one of those method Cord's method depending upon the situation you can find out or Newton Repson or whatever it is to find out the value of h 1 once you have found out h 1 repeat to find h 2 and h 3 can be automatically found out. So, this is how one can find out h 1 and h 2 then flow q 1 flow q 2 and q 3 you can find out which is the q flow any flow you find that is so the problem was to find the q given this is the scenario when pipe is running full this you can find out right. So, under this head difference how much will be the flow that you can find out. When it is parallel the matter is for, for somewhat simple because now that is right. So, uh, if even if it is same and these are in parallel right and all are subjected to same head. So, q 1 can be simply found out simply using h h f is equals to 15 right because all are the same length is 20 and d is also known. So, you can find out q 1 simply putting into the equation q 2 you can find out simply putting into the equation back and q 3 and sum total will give you the total flow. Total flow. So, when when they are when it is parallel it is easier to find out it is series then it is a little bit slightly more difficult to 
find out, all right. But this is how we can find out if you know when there is a case. There is one solved problem in SP 35 also on the similar line if you want to look into in appendix or somewhere. But anyway the same we have I have already explained to you it is very simple it is not uh, nothing, nothing complicated except that this will require a little bit of time. If it is in series it, it will take a little bit of time in calculation right. Okay, Let us look into some more issues related to uh, some more issues related to issues related to some fundamental principle. Now, when you have complex pipe network, uh, suppose something like this uh, loop, let us say, series, you know, you have loop complex pipe network. So, it will have some finite number of loops, let us say two loops here, containing any number of branch pipes, some of which may be having common loops. So, there were number of branches would be there in this one, one branch, two, three, four, in this one, one, two, three, four. So, branches are there and you can solve the problem by applying Kachow's law, right. So, complex ones can be solved, okay. Basic idea is net flow at any junction must be equals to 0. That means, the flow rate in a junction must be equals to flow rate out of the junction. So, you can set equations, you know. So, in this junction, this is coming, this is going out. So, whatever is coming in must be equals to whatever is going out. In this junction, something is coming from this side. You assume the direction of the flow, it same must be going out. And in this one, this is what is coming, this is what is coming, this is going out, this is going out. So, again sum total of the, you know. So, you have to assume the flow in each, you might assume or whatever it is that condition has to be maintained. The net head loss around a loop must be equals to 0. So, you can in a consistent manner if you calculate out head loss a around a loop that must be equals to 0, right. So, that is what one can do this. The procedure of determining the distribution, flow distribution involves assigning flows in each branch. Okay, before that, you know what the information you will have is how much coming in here how much coming in here and so going from here let us say going out from there or going out from there or whatever it is right. So, say say um, you know some water supply system um, you have complex networks right. So, you want to find out the flow in each one of them then this would be this would be useful this would be useful right ok. So, the procedure of determining flow distribution assigning flows for example, you might have a manifold at the top of the at the top level. So, where your water is coming from the tank then you have many branches coming out of it right and then being supplied. So, these situations may arise not very regularly, but many places. So, procedure is then to determine the flow distribution first assign flows to each branch. Assume a flow to each branch in ensuring that incoming flow is equals to okay. outgoing flow. So, in a manner that continuity condition is mentioned is maintained, you know in one condition one is maintained. Then the head loss around each loop is calculated, you can then calculate out around each loop you can calculate out the head loss, right. And sum total find out the sum total, because in a loop you can find out consistent manner what is the head loss, right because you have assumed of q 1. So, h f you can find out h 1 h you know h 2 branch each branch you can find out. Sum total of this sigma h must be equals to 0 for a loop and if this is not 0 then this has to be adjusted the error has to be adjusted and that is Hardy cross method that is you know this procedure is called Hardy you know using Hardy cross method one can do that. So, what is done basic equation is something like this you have to first assume find out the sigma h f value in a loop that should be equals to 0 if not 0 that is the error. So, this deviation of the you know correction you have to do a you have to do a correction for the same you have to do a correction for the same right. So, we will just do that you derive this formula for this one. For example, q 0 may be assumed flow rate in a branch pipe and correct 
the balance flow rate. So, correction would be delta q and we should get an expression for delta q. So, we will just look into this. Thank <music> you.